It has been 60 years since human beings first went into space, 20 years of consistently having a human on board the International Space Station. And only WCCO was given a special opportunity to talk with two of them on board the space station. Mark Van de Heij graduated from Benilde St. Margaret and St. John's University. We also chatted with astronaut Shane Kimbrough. Mike Augustinek got some help from some local elementary school students to ask the tough questions. Well, because you guys will retire at some point uh, from NASA, I found a few future astronauts that have some questions for you. These questions come from first through fifth grade students at Whittier International Elementary School in Minneapolis. And we'll start with Abdiraman. How do you sleep while you're floating around? Basically, we have a sleeping bag. Each of us has what I'd say is about the size of a phone booth, for those of you who remember what phone booths are. Um, place that's our own private space. My sleeping bag is hanging up on the wall there. Um, when I first got to the space station, I felt like I needed to be pressed against the wall to feel like I was in a bed. But eventually I got really comfortable just floating, disconnected everything except the shoulders of my sleeping bag. And I go in that room and I just free float. It's, uh, you can't get a better water bed, that's for sure. I've heard that some cosmic rays or, or interstellar radiation can sometimes cause flashes of light if your eyes are closed. Do you guys ever experience that while you're trying to get to sleep? Yeah, I've, I've experienced that a few times. It's not every night. And, uh, of course, you've got to be alert enough with your eyes closed to actually recognize it. But um, it just, it's, uh, yeah, it just kind of looks like a spark or something like that. My name is Marvin, and my question is, what do you eat in space? Hey, Marvin, we eat uh, a lot of really interesting food. Um, it's, it's a lot of times it's the food that, like, the military eats. So they're from, like, MREs. Uh, so a lot of it's rehydratable, and a lot of it, the other part of it is just heat, you know, we just heat it up. So uh, we have a great variety this time. I mean, it's, it's the food lab has done a great job at the Johnson Space Center um, preparing our food and our menus. And we have everything you can imagine um, from, like, pork chops to chicken to beef. Um, to seafood and other things that um, they have in pouches for us. So um, it's a lot of soft food. We don't get a lot of crunchy things. So that's, uh, I think, something that we miss after we've been up here a while are things like salads and lettuce and chips and things like that that are crunchy. But uh, the variety is very good. We also have Russian food because we have cosmonauts on board and they share it with us sometimes. And that's really great food. Um, we have a French and a Japanese astronaut on our flight. So we get some French and some Japanese food as well. So the key about space food, I think, is just variety. My name is Torsten, and I am from Mil Minneapolis Public Whittier School. And my question is, what kinds of experiments are you doing in space? Gosh, there are hundreds of experiments we're doing on the space station. We've got uh, experiments that help us better prepare to explore. explore further away from Earth than we have been lately. We've got experiments that help life on Earth. In fact, there's a uh, experiment I spent about five hours working on today that's called celestial immunity. And we're, we've got uh, blood cells, I believe, from uh, donors, both young adults and elderly. And we're using the fact that being in space causes rapid changes in our immune systems to help study with greater rapidity how we can uh, understand understand our immune systems and and possibly resulting in medications that are that are able to help us out well speaking of health and staying safe nissan and mutasin want to know what what do you do if a meteor or other space debris is in your path so we don't get that very often. Um, it happens, I don't know, maybe a handful of times a year at the most. And uh, Mission Control will let us know. Um, we have people that track that, that sort of thing. Um, and then they let NASA know, and then NASA lets us know. Um, usually it's well in advance, and so they have, we have a couple options where they can move the space station out of the way is one option. Um, if it's late in the game, um, they, they would just tell us to go get in a certain part of the space station, or if it's really going to be close and it's late, they'll have us go get in our vehicles um, just in case something hit the space station. We could undock and then come home safely. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your stay. That's how you make an exit, right? <laughs> how about that? Wasn't that cool? Thank you so much to the students, the teacher, uh, and Principal Lori Lamberty over at Whittier International School for helping us with this really cool science. Such project. good questions. Yeah, oh, nice job, that. kids, right? Yes. Okay.